Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for May 30th, 31st, June 1st, June 2nd, Monday through Thursday. Now, I am going to use my Radley Valentine deck this for the main reading. This is not the main reading. This is only the introduction. Well, it's not only, but if this is the introduction. You will see this on all the readings. I will also post the timestamp so you can bypass this introduction and go straight to the readings. So I will be using my Radley Valentine Archangel Power Tarot cards. For the main reading, I will pull one from his Guardian Angel cards. I will also pull one from my Emily Anderson Crystal deck. Now, for the introduction, I am going to use my Weight Rider, um, more of the traditional tarot, and my Colette Baron Reed, the good tarot. I will remember her name, but I find that this has really a lot of depth. This is supposed to be the nice tarot and sweet tarot, and I don't know, there's a lot of depth through this to this, and there's a lot of hidden energies. Anyway, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. But remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest, okay? I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power, Holy Spirit, God, whoever you want to call that. I know I call God Holy Spirit. And whatever the words are, um, they just come through. I think that's called claircognition. Uh, where it's just no filters, it just comes through. I try not to get in the way of the message, which which is not always easy. Sometimes you, you start hearing yourself and going, oh, I wonder if it means this. And it's just my job is to just filter, and not to filter, is just to be the one and let that out. Now, a couple of things. Let's see what is going on and where are the planets. Let's just do a recap real quick. Jupiter is in Aries. That's been since May 10th. I think that goes until October. Saturn is an Aquarius. It will go retrograde June 4th. So some of its energies are slowing down. Jupiter is the um, planet of um, empowerment, enlargement, um, good fortune, th you know, things that are really um, you know, beneficial. And Aries, of course, is the first sign of the zodiac and is kind of the, yes, I want this done, a little bit impatient, wants to move things along. Aquarius thinks about things. Aquarius is an air sign. Aries is the fire sign. Now, Pluto has been here since, what, 2020, I mean, 2008, I think, is in Capricorn, but it is retrograde right now. Mercury is retrograde in Taurus. It is, it, that was on May 22nd, and it will go direct on June Third, but it will stay in Taurus. Now, Venus is in Taurus on May 28th, and Mars is in Aries. Um, what is that? May 24th. May, you know, Aries and Mars, they're two peas in a pod. Um, Uranus is in Taurus. It's been there for a while until I think 2024, and that's always, you know, Uranus, Uranus is the, you know, most unstable, unpredictable of the planets. We have a full moon coming up on the 14th in Sagittarius, and then Cancer will begin June 21st. Okay, so, and now, and Neptune is still in Pisces, so just know that. So we do, the thing about the planets, there's not a lot that, okay, we do have the planets that are in retrograde, but the interesting thing about the planets is they're coming very close to each other, and they're getting into another alignment. And there's supposed to be this very big alignment June 24th where, you know, you'll be able to go outside and you'll just be able to just see, I think, five or, I think maybe five or all of the planets. I, I need to look that up a little more. But there was an alignment, what was it, about a month ago? This is going to have more planets in it. So you should be seeing more and more of this. Now, we have been having, um, you know, we have been having a lot of solar flares uh, oh, well, getting back to the planets, the thing that's interesting is they're coming very close to each other in their degrees, closer than normal, so their their energies are getting a little bit more intense. Okay, so anyway, um, you know, a lot of solar flares, a lot of, um, you know, electric magnetic uh, frequencies, EMFs, if I said that right, a lot of energies, a lot of ascension energies. You know, the people that come here, 
I have told you this before. I believe that we are all light workers, um, star seeds. Would some would say indigo children, depending on your age. Crystal children, depending again on your age. I'm from I'm from the um, I'm what I'm the OG. I'm from the the old school of the star seeds, but we won't go down that road. Anyway, interesting thing coming up too. The twenty I mean June fourth. 5th and 6th. So we, I told you that we had a couple of planets that were changing a little bit on the 4th. Uh, so Saturn Aquarius goes retro, Saturn in Aquarius goes retrograde June 4th. And then we had Mercury going direct on June 3rd. So there's the other thing about those dates, the 4th, 5th, and 6th, is there's a couple of um, religious, you know, Christianity and Judaism are having some having holidays on that day. So on the June 5th, there's going to be Pentecost for the Christians, which they consider, you know, and I myself am one, consider the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then there is also Shabbat, S-H-U, V-U-O-T or S-H-O-V-U-O-T. Um, and that is, that is, you know, not necessarily, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I did hear that one of the alternate names was Pentecost with that too. Interesting. I did go into Gematria and put them on separately, and then I put them in together. That in itself was very interesting. So things, things, things are going on. And, you know, not, I can't necessarily tell you per se what we just all feel that think that things are about to change gemini you know gemini doesn't want doesn't take any baloney from anybody i'd use a stronger word but i don't want to have to click that i used a stronger word on when i published this anyway gemini doesn't take um any guff very you know looks at things and it's very um you know wants to cut to the matter even if the twins the two want to give a little, give Gemini a little bit of that, um, you know, duality of opinions. Gemini wants to go to the truth. So, Gemini energy. So let's see. Well, we had a bunch of cards coming out. Let me go and get them. So, a bunch of cards. And you know, when they come out, I need to do them. I need to. I need to play them. I need to see where we're at with all of this. So, we're gonna go with this. So let's see. For, you know, asking higher power, God, Holy Spirit, what does the world, what is going on in the universe? Well, we have some things that popped. These cards popped and these this card popped. Anything that is reversed has a little stronger energy. This one is reversed. This is a seven. Seven, now the numbers do have meaning also. Seven has a divine umbrella, divine intervention. Sometimes it's divine interference, but it's always to get us where we need to go for our betterment. Anyway, here is a major arcana. Major arcana is the universal aspect, what is going on in the higher realms. So now we have the chariot. The chariot has um, is always something quick to me. The chariot moves quick. The chariot is trying to win the race. The chariot does win the race. But the chariot is also about leaving things up to higher power. You know, this is not under our control, even though we try. The, you know, the, the driver of the chariot does try to um, control, possibly through thoughts. You know, remember, I'm always telling you to project good energy, good thoughts, you know, shine, you know stay shining. The, you know, so the, the driver is trying to do that, but ultimately it is not under the driver's control. And there has to be an acceptance with that. There has to be a, I will do my part, but higher power, you need to do your part. So there's something very strong going on this week. Um, let's see what this is all about. Let's see what else we have here. We'll just take them one at a time like this. We have the Queen of Pentacles. Now... The Queen of Pentacles is a lovely energy. Now, court cards, underlying energies. You know, so pages, their underlying energy is earth. Knights, fire. Queens, water. Kings, air. So here we have the Queen of Pentacles. Like I said, underlying energy is water. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Now, we're not quite into Cancer season. We're not even halfway there yet, though we are having that new moon in Gemini, which means then we'll be closer than we were. 
But um, cancer will have, I do feel that cancer will bring around about more stability. So, um, you know, so right now, Gemini's riling things up a little bit, trying to, you know, clear up the stuff. Anyway, Queen of Pentacles. Pentacles is Earth energy. So we've got that water, that emotional, spiritual energy, but we also have Pentacles on top of that. So she's got the caring energy, but at the same time, she knows the value of what needs to be done. She knows that um, she has to take care of her family the, or the, the country, the kingdom. She, she likes nice things. She is a woman of substance. She is the queen. And she want, again, she does have that Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy. And Mercury's in Taurus right now, whether it be, you know, um, retro or going forward. And, you know, so there's a lot of things that she wants to grab onto, and she really wants to get things done. Okay, so good energy. She likes nice things. She does, you know, she doesn't overly care. She does care for the money. She does care for the stability, but she also has a heart. Um, you know, she. Do, I kind of feel like she has a heart of gold at the same time. Next card. Okay, now we come to an eight of cups. Cup energy is that water energy I talked about. It is our Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, fluid and emotional energy, spiritual energy. So we have that eight. Eight has, you know, think of it as infinity, unlimited opportunities, unlimited possibilities. We do have this reference to the moon. Um, so, you know, so we do have that uh, moon energy, which Cancer and all the water energies is very associated with the moon. Cancer, however, is the moon baby. So very strong cancer energy with this. This is, you know, this person is walking away. She, she, he is walking away from maybe what she knew, what he knew. I kind of get a feminine energy, even though it does not look feminine here. But maybe because of this, I kind of get this feminine energy. And there is the divine feminine. There is the divine masculine. You know, there is this balance between the two. And this is walking away, walk, turning your back on a lot of things that you once knew and, and going off and saying, I may be, it's not necessarily the full energy, but it is a little bit like that and saying, I don't know where I'm going. I just know that where I was is not serving me anymore. So let's see what we have next here. Well, this is again reversed. So now we have the six. Six is the number of man. Remember I was talking about June 4th, 5th, and 6th. Also remember June 6th, even though we're not quite there. Um, June 6th will be 6-6, six, six, and then we have 2022, which adds up to 6 again. So we have that 6-6-6 six, six, six energy. Well, this is 6. It is the number of man, and numbers can be used you know, not, you know, for the uh, darker energies, but it can also be used for the lighter energies. So we're putting our energy into the light. And so six is the number of man. This is fire energy. This is wands, or some people call it rods. Um, so this is fire. This is Aries. Jupiter's in Aries. This is um, Leo. And this is Sagittarius. The next full moon will be in Sagittarius. Passionate, burning, very adventurous, very daring, very committed. So whatever this is that we're leaving, there will be a good outcome for this. And I shouldn't say we went up. Whatever the universe is changing for us and taking away, there will be a good outcome. The six of rods, wands, basically uh, is about achievement, is about recognition, is about... Um, you know, everyone cheering and clapping and saying, great job, you are on your way, you are being recognized. So, um, you know, so there's some interesting stuff going on. Let's see what we got here now. We're going to put this here. Oh, but then there's the struggle. Then there is the struggle. So 10 is transitioning energy, 10, transition, one, new beginning, zero, God source energy. Um, you know, this is the Ten of Rods, which is, again, that fire energy. So even though there is success and this does move, and I'm going to kind of read them like this, as maybe this is the, the deeper story, that, you know, between this and this, this is the struggle. It, it's a struggle to maintain. It's a struggle to push forward. It's having too much to, you know, the burden is great. The burden is great with this one. I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling... 
it's it's heavy. The burden is heavy. You need some help. We all need to help. You know, m- you know maybe we need to come together. Uh, there is the struggle energy here. Let's see what we got here. Come with the Queen of Cups. Interesting with that. So now we have the water, water energy. We have the emotional energy. We have the, you remember, Neptune is in Pisces energy. Um, we're going to be going to Cancer soon enough. We still have that, F, you know, still have that Scorpio full moon. The Queen of Cups has a lot of emotional energy. She she cares deeply. She cares deeply. She is worried. She is loving. She is just kind of like, I want things to be better. I, you know, what can I do? You know, she's got some. She's got some little bit of her um, issues because she's she's so committed. I'm feeling like she is so committed. At the same time, there is trust. There's trust in whatever this is. So there's some sort of a chalice, some sort of a, you know, um, spiritual connection. She has her, the water around her. Again, you know, even though things may not make sense, she has trust in something greater than herself. Next card, the magician, again reversed. So we have the one, one new beginnings, the magician that the, the magician is the first one the fool meets on his journey or her journey. The one that, you know, you know the, the fool takes that leap of faith and says, you know, I don't really know where I'm going, possibly because of this. I don't know where I'm going. But then the magician says, you've got everything you need. The magician has the, you know, you, you know as above, so below. You need to, you know, connect with higher power, God, source, whoever that is to you. Everything will be revealed to you. You need to be bold. You need to be, um, you know, you need to um, just go after what it is you feel you have to go after. Now, it's not quite the, um, you know, where this is the lead into the um, high priestess, which is about intuition. But the magician is really saying there are some concrete things that you can do. But you have to ask. You have to ask. Okay, let's see what this last card says. Okay, Seven of Cups. So this week will bring about choices. It will bring about choices. Where do we go? What do we do? Where, you know, what are our choices? We're going to have to think carefully about these choices. So we may be put to a point where we have to choose something. And it may be something that will be beneficial to us. It may be something that we just, you know, we're just going to have to just trust. It may be something that could be very harmful. There is a sense of choices. Again, it goes back to, you know, leaving it into higher power's hands. We do our part. Um, we have to have some trust here. You know, the burden is heavy. We are victorious. So we've got a whole bunch of energies here. Uh, just It's just so much in your face, so much. What are we going to do? Uh, let's see with our Colette Baron reed uh, the Good Tarot. What might, can you clarify all this? There's just so much here. There is just so much here. There's struggle. There's choices. There's walking away. There's victory. There is, you know, victory in both, in both cases there. You know, the magician, again, you've got what it takes. You know how to happen, but you have to trust. You have to trust higher power. You have to trust, um, you know, source. But then again, it's always a choice. It's a choice. What do you do? What do you do? Do you trust? Do you trust in higher power? Do you trust in man? Do you trust yourself, your gut, your instincts, which is, you know, instincts, intuition. A lot of times, you know, we consider that is our connection. So it's not an easy, it's, it's, it can be a little bit overwhelming. It can be a little bit um, confusing. Now we come back to the page of fire. That one flew out. So pages, underlying energy is... Earth, can't, uh, sorry, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, money, job, career. But we have that fire energy again. So there might be something going on because of Jupiter being in Aries right now. So we have that fire energy, that very passionate, very committed energy. A lot of times the page is very enthusiastic, you know, it, and just believes that uh, he, she can get anything done. You know, a lot of times this has to do with your work, your job, but that fire is the passion, the passion that you're putting towards getting something done. And 
this is an exciting time. This, you know, the page of fire is very excited about the changes. Very, maybe excited about the choices. Maybe excited about what the page has left behind. Sees that there is um, lots of possibilities in this this week. Sees that, um, you know, by giving it up to a higher power, that things can be resolved. You know, knowing that the struggle is there, the page is ready for the job. The page is ready for anything. Well, sometimes it's a little bit hard when we get all these cards. So, so I was giving you the meanings of what they are. Let me know. Comment about, you know, comment and tell me what you're thinking, what you're seeing because I see a, I see a lot of positivity here. I don't we don't see um the tower, we don't see the devil. We've seen the tower and the devil. The only thing is it's a struggle. It's hard. It's hard to hold on. It's hard to believe. It's hard to have faith. It's hard to you know, you know, let your um your 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 light shine. It's not always easy, but you know the page is very enthusiastic, very up for the job. You know, we have the um queen of Pente- uh, the queen of pentacles that want you know says you know I'm gonna there's gonna be a lot of provision even if it doesn't necessarily feel that way. The only thing that gets me is that this uh you know this eight of cups turning away from something and that does seem like it's going to be a choice it's a choice on what we turn away from where we go with this okay so much going on with this and but like i said when the cards fall i have to read them i have to read them i have to tell you i have to share with you that but i would say that we do have a lot of higher power energy here we do have a lot of choice energy here we do have a lot of um maybe um, expanding and going our own way or going our own path, going maybe being called to our truer calling. Uh, Like I said, you know, we are, I do believe that the people that come here, you know, star seeds, indigo, crystal children, there's, there's a whole list of what you could be or where, you know, depending on your birth year. Um, You know, so it's, there's a lot of activating energy here. There's a lot of things that are moving and shaking is it easy? Not at all. Not at all. Okay, take a moment, please, to like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell for notifications. If you're not getting notifications and you know that you've done all of that, unclick everything and then click everything again. Okay, and that might help. All right, I will now go to the readings. Hello to my Scorpios, and how are you? I hope wonderful. Remember, we've got that new moon coming, so that just adds a little more to your full moon that we just had. But um, this is also Gemini. <laughs> Gemini likes to, um, you know, likes to talk and also likes to really clear up things. So just be prepared for that type of energy. I'm kind of getting that there's going to be some really interesting communications coming for you. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, looks like it's going to be about children. Looks about like it's going to be nostalgic energy. But let's see, what else do we have for our Scorpios from Higher Power? Higher Power, what do you want to tell Scorpio? What do you want Scorpio to know? What, What do we need to give Scorpio? Any or all. Here we go. Uh, I do feel that the new moon is going to be interesting. I feel like communication is going to be very interesting for you. And so let's see. This one is reversed. This is the one that fell out. We have a six. Six is the number of man. Raphael is your water energy. It's your cancer. It is your energy. It is also Pisces energy. It's fluid, emotional. It's very romantic. It's very spiritual. The Six of Raphael does have this, let's go back to a better time. This does have a very nostalgic energy to it. It's looking back at a different time of your life, kind of thinking, where could I have made some changes? Where could I have maybe done something a little bit differently? How did I even get to where I'm at? So, But the thing about the Six of Raphael is that it's a very romanticized energy. It's a very much that, you know, you probably, even if you went this way or that way, you probably would have wound up where you're at now, okay? But this does have this, like, looking back, and it's very good, it's very cleansing type of energy here, 
and especially since coming up to that 30th is the waning part of the moon where you want to get rid of things so it is kind of getting rid of um you know anything that has been holding you back but six of raphael talks about having being a little happier embracing your inner child new friends or rekindled relationships children or childhood your next card the empress now i love the empress so we have a six we have a three the empress is archangel gabriel um well is the messenger the divine messenger is archangel gabriel so you could be hearing news with the empress now we have that three um the power of three celebratory energy also creative energy the empress especially during mercury retrograde to me is the divine feminine divine source feminine source trying to make trying to get things put into a better place okay now if you have any cancer energy around you or in your in your birth chart you should be looking at them also there you know do some cross watching because uh cancer also got the empress here so the empress is trying to make right trying to put you on the right trail trying to provide opportunities for you that will get you where the empress believes you know will help you and be some and, and actually be um give provision for okay the empress during mercury retrograde when she pops up i love her because she's she's very besides being very creative and very um fertile with imagination and ideas she's also trying to be helpful she's also trying to like i said make things right make things the way they're supposed to be now now she's also very polite so you do need to ask you do need to put this out there you do need to say i want to know what i where i need to go because we do have something called free choice and you know if the you know if we did not have that we could just go along with whatever we're supposed to do and just kind of go along with our life and many times our intuition our spirituality will tell us and again i think i said this even for cancer will tell us to go this way and we say ah eh, no no i think i'm going to go this way and you know even when the empress is trying to make things right we can mess it up we can still mess up the plan for us our path for us so but the empress itself herself is trying to provide us with whatever it is we need to meet to end some karmic circles cycles to um break some karmic ties okay so the empress again archangel gabriel divine messenger so we could be hearing some news here time to act upon your plans creativity is rewarded luxurious or abundant resources next card reversed 10 of michael situation over something is ending for you something is coming to its conclusion so a 10 transitional energy one new beginning zero god source energy michael is our aquarius remember saturn's in aquarius saturn in aquarius and it's going retrograde on the 4th so we're coming up to that but this is a time when reality versus illusion okay so reality wins uh, now 10 i do love this card i do love her you've probably seen this you know she's danced her little toe she's done everything she can she takes her bow things are ending now it's time to transition into something much better for you okay so a situation so we have the past we have the future we have the empress bridging our way The a situation has ended and you are finally free. New opportunities for happiness will now follow. Put the past behind you. Let it go. Let it go and move forward with that new moon Gemini, okay? Let's see now. So 6 3 10. Let's see. Guardian angels, what do you want to tell Scorpios? What do you want to tell my beautiful Scorpios? Kind of What do you want to tell Scorpios? Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Reversed. Ace of thoughts. So ace, one, new beginnings, new starts. Zero, I'm sorry, thought is Michael. 
air energy. Again, Aquarius, Libra, um, Gemini, Gemini, new moon, new ideas. So this one, the Ace of Thought has new ideas, is brimming with excitement, is brimming with these possibilities. This cherub has arrived to congratulate you for your brilliant new idea, which is truly inspired. It's important to communicate clearly and thoroughly with others who are involved in the implementation of your idea. Don't be dissuaded by little challenges along the way. These are merely course corrections to perfect your plan. So like I said, there's, you know, there's a, some communication energy around here too. So let's see where that's going. So we have a 63101. Let's see what that's all about. But again, I, I get like a past, trying to figure things out, trying to move us forward. Definitely moving my Scorpios forward. Anyway, let's see what we've got here. And then that ace is new ideas, new thoughts, new choices like that. Okay, my Scorpios, let's see. What do we have? What crystal or energy would be helpful for my Scorpios? First, let's see. Click, click, click. Reversed. Moldavite. Now, that's interesting, too, because if you have any cancer, definitely take a look, because cancer got mold. They pulled mold, Moldavite also. Expensive little stone, so think carefully about that. But it's about healing protection, telepathy, connection. Interesting for that. You're, you've got some, you you know, my Scorpios, use the waning, waning type of the moon. Let things go because there's something, you know, we've been talking about new directions, new starts, and this looks like this is very possibly the time for that. Okay, my Scorpios, take a moment to like, share, subscribe, click on that bell for notifications. As always, my Scorpios, know that you are loved, stay shining, and be blessed. Bye-bye.